I was super surprised uh, to be invited for this uh, this year megaphone um, because I'm not exactly a part of your pond, um, but I guess because of that, because I get some distance to your issues, I can provide maybe not um, the solution you're looking for, but I would hopefully change your way of thinking about the, the issues you have. And, uh, and the, my, my speech is designed not to address your troubles, but to change the perspective. Uh, for psychologists, these perspective changes are even more important than uh, answering of, of, uh, single questions of our customers' uh, clients. Uh, because it allows you to work on your private way of solving things. So it's more like teaching people how to deal with, 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 with their troubles on their own than uh, providing a, a, a universal solution for everyone, which is not existing, by the way. So let's get back to the story I prepared for you for today. Um, and I hope you like it. You can stay uh, in touch with me, of course, via our mm, net space and, uh, and ask any kind of questions uh, uh, you may want. So then, uh, yeah, we are living in a, in a year of chaos or, or should I say in an age of chaos. And um, chaos is not a simple instability. It's just the, the situation where the structure any kind of structure is violently rejected. Uh, when you take a look at social services, uh, let's say medicine, education, in many countries in Europe, they are in deep crisis, not only because of COVID. Climate, politics are in crisis too. Economy, based on unrealistic desire to earn uh, triple every year, is in uh, crisis also. So we are all asking the same question. What the heck is going on? how do we survive this mess? And, uh, and we all have no idea what's going to be here in five years' time. And I'm not talking to you, as I said before, because I know what to do. I'm as well confused and lost, uh, totally. Uh, even planning next year holiday is, is such a demanding as an as a accurate long-term weather forecast. And in the meantime, we have some a small revolution here uh, down in Poland, and I need to take part uh, uh, in it. So I certainly don't know what, what, what's going to be. Uh, I'm here because I can tell you how to navigate in the time of chaos, uh, how to move your everyday struggles and everyday questions to a different level. Uh, the level where they can be properly addressed and understood. Uh, and I'm going to tell you about some ancient wisdom, and this wisdom is not mine. It has been passed by the generation of humans before us. And you know it too. Uh, the only issue is you need to reach deep inside to find it inside yourself. This wisdom is based on archetypes. Uh, archetypes, according to Carl Gustav Jung, are universal archaic symbols and images that derive from the collective unconsciousness. They are the psychic uh, counterpart of instinct, very primal, very basic thing. And they are being told thousands of times in myths, in dreams, in art. And as I, as I said, you know them well. You just need to reach deep inside. And uh, we are all aware that has been complexity in the world because the world is just uncertain place and been like this uh, for ages. And we as humans have designed reasonably effective systems to adapt to this natural disorder. Some institutions like law or religion uh, we created for uh, norms and values even some ephemeral business models or, uh, let's say, political strategies are sort of logos, a sort of rulemaking to make it easy for us. And uh, all of this was created to compose, let's say, civilization. 
it's the, the civilization is merely a set of cultural implements that allows us to domesticate change. And you may agree with me, all of it is crumbling down now. And we can't predict, we can't control, and we can't foresee. In exactly the same time when the collective consciousness creates law, religion, or a rule of conduct, collective unconsciousness does not need to create a thing. It is pregnant with all knowledge and all experience of humankind. We just need to get back to the stories we have been told before. Why we may think of doing so? Because in this current moment of political Mayheim, uh, climate disasters, global, global pandemic, we simply, or maybe you can, I cannot, uh, use our standard intellectual procedures. Despite trying to uh, recognize and respond to all of the disruption, disruptions we, we have out, uh, we have found them painfully inadequate. In 2020, where our private wars and uh, the world we are living in is, is basically falling apart, uh, we need to find a way of making sense of this world, of this collapsing structure. Making sense is a primal adaptation of human brain. When everything else fails, we need to seek the meaning. Uh, the meaning in our relationships, in our uh, personal uh, activist uh, struggle, in our world of values, the meaning is everything now. We need to create, to create a map even though we don't know the terrain. And that's why I want to uh, tell you a story the story you already probably know from the early childhood books or, uh, or maybe from primary school. This is a story about the Ulysses, hero king of Ithaca. Maybe you remember him. Uh, so cunning and courageous Ulysses was this wise man who ended the Troy War, mostly because of his versatility and uh, his cleverness. And uh, there is a very strong uh, figure of the trickster, uh, the, the, uh, the spirit of change in this figure of uh, Ulysses. His archetype may help us dealing with our own uncertainty and uh, the situation we are, we are in. Imagine him, the great king, the great hero, with his crewmates, returning home after 12, 10 years of Troy war. Uh, yeah, he had uh, 12 warships filled with spoils of war, and uh, they were so proud and so sure that nothing wrong can happen to them. Uh, what, what worse could, could it be? Uh, but one of their stops, they landed on the island of Cyclop. And here the troubles began. Looking for a healthy snack, Cyclop Polyphemus captured them in order to feed. Not feed them, feed himself. And once again, exactly like in Troia, uh, it was Ulysses' Vit that saved the day. But th this time, the price was really high. Blinded, covered with blood, Poly Polyphemus called for help of his mighty father, Poseidon god of the seas. Yes, you may find th those two on our streaming. Uh, it's the best uh, capture of them I, I could possibly find. So uh, Polyphemus called for help uh, uh, of his father, Poseidon. And Poseidon cursed all sailors. And the curse was simple. Ulysses was never to return home. And if he succeeds, he will greet his kingdom poor, alone, and without the glory. And uh, you, you may feel exactly like him. Eventually, we will land somewhere in the spring of 2021 or in five years, but we will arrive there worn out. Then would be much of the glory and much of magnificence there. 
There may be some troubles which we cannot begin to imagine. And that makes us modern Ulysses. And our fate is just a pot filled with very, very unfortunate events. And we, exactly like him, we sail without a plan. And we, exactly like him, we can't predict what will happen next. And uh, you may feel it. When things are good, they will soon may change to the worst. Ulysses was exposed to all kinds of sudden changes, like uh, when he visited the master of the winds, Aeol, who, impressed by the hero's virtues, caught all winds in a sack and then gave them to the hero. And how little that meant, since his crewmates, greedy and stupid, immediately opened the sack and let the winds free once again. Furious winds caused a storm that pushed the ships to the shores of a stone-throwing wild tribes. Only one of the 12 ships Ulysses possessed got away. And it was only one among many misfortune and events no one could have predicted. On the paintings, you may see one of the most pleasant yet disturbing of his uh, adventures. This is a beautiful nymph, uh, Enchantress Calypso, with, on her island, uh, where Ulysses spent, I guess, seven years uh, having super good time, uh, but unable to move, move on. Uh, Ulysses finally made his way home to his wife and restored his kingdom and they live happily ever after, even despite the, the, the Calypso affair. Uh, and throughout his travel, uh, as, as you may remember, Ulysses fought not only against the Poseidon curse, which is kind of symbol of the fate, uh, but the fate itself. In our modern world, we don't believe in fate as much. Uh, we, we, we like science to describe circumstances we are living in. Uh, that's why I would like to, to connect the old story of U Ulysses with elegant and very modern framework. And the framework is called BANI. BANI is an acronym for four words. Yes, the other, the other photo is uh, a great story. We're going we're gonna to reach it in a moment. So BANI is an acronym for four words. Brittle, anxious, nonlinear, and incomprehensible. Uh, it's a framework to articulate the situation in which conditions are simply unstable. They are just chaotic. Uh, outcomes aren't, aren't simply hard to foresee. They are completely unpredictable. It's exactly what we have now. Uh, and it's exactly as uh, with our hero Ulysses uh, when he left Troy, uh, of course in fame and glory, and he sailed home, but, uh, but the story went very, very troubled. So as for now, I need you to remember three things. Uh, in this ever-changing world, your mental state and quality of your life depends on an adequate adaptation and giving up your own old habits. Some of you already had felt that uh, those, those old ways of thinking uh, um, aren't working anymore. And some of you asking the, the, the basic question, so what we can do if the old stuff is not uh, working anymore? And that's why I want you to consider or just remember the idea of archetypes, uh, because they carry very old knowledge and they to be found everywhere, uh, in art, in your dreams. Uh, but the most common way of presenting them are, the, the, are those old stories, myths, uh, we are talking about. And you may get in deep contact with them uh, when you get in deep contact with yourself. You just need to trust your intuition, embrace your emotions and make usage of this non-rational part of yours. Uh, uh, I know it has been rejected for the sake of optimization and effectiveness, um, and or for the uh, technocratic uh, rationalism, and many of you may not trust your intuition, but it pays off, to pays off uh, uh, to make a peace with your uh, intuition. And uh, that's exactly the reason we are, we are today investigating the story of Ulysses, uh, because with it, you will learn how to deal with the world which is brittle, 
anxiety inducting, non-linear, and full of those things which seems to be incomprehensible. And uh, the look on him might help you see the similarities we have, uh, how we are lost, how we, uh, how we are disconnected, how we left the Troia, <laughs> the old world, uh, and we are heading the future we probably cannot imagine. Uh, how we suffer, how we feel alone, how we are cursed in a way that we've been born in exactly this part, moment of history and uh, we go through COVID, climate crisis and all the burden we have around us. So let's get back to the Bani framework, brittle. Um, when something is brittle, uh, is susceptible to sudden and catastrophic failure. Uh, like Ulysses, he was, he was sure that after the long war, nothing worse can happen to him, but only because of misfortunate accident, he was cursed, he lost everything and, and found his way home in no less than 10 years. Uh, brittleness is an illusionary strength. Things that are, are brittle, uh, they look strong, uh, they may even be strong, until they hit a breaking point, and you can see it around yourself. Uh, after this, this breaking point, everything falls apart. Mm, so brittle things are solid until they're not. They bail gracefully, they shatter. Uh, brittleness often arises from uh, efforts to maximize efficiency, to wring out uh, every, every last bit of value, money, power, food, work from a certain system. And uh, you can see brittleness in uh, your attitude towards yourself. Uh, as activists, we tend to focus entirely on our efficiency, uh, pay no attention to, to, um, to work-life balance and so on. And then when the burnout hits us, uh, we seem to ourselves uh, worthless and a total failure. So uh, when, you, when you have brittleness, how you protect yourself from it? Uh, I would say consider your, uh, Ulysses' attitude. Viti, he was Viti smart, uh, but not hardworking. Uh, he used tricks uh, as, as his mental strength for his advantage, and you may do it too. Uh, always create a cushion for failures, always have a plan B, and never trust the system as the system around you is uh, gonna crumble this way or other. And, uh, and now you can answer the, the, the first question I have for you, or you can write down your answers uh, in, uh, in a chat. How do you feel about brittleness, brittleness, sorry, brittleness in your world? It, it, may be, it may be on as we speak. So it's gonna get there. It's, we're gonna get there. So the question for you, as we need to learn how how the whole speech works for you, is how do you feel about brittleness in your world? That everything, every system around is cracking and trembling down. How does it affect you? Okay, it's on. Good. So I may proceed. Uh, you may write down and maybe listen to me at the same time. Uh, so anxiety, anxiety. Uh, you, the, the, this word is in your uh, answers, uh, and, uh, and uh, it popped up in my conversation with Maya at the at the beginning. The anxiety is everywhere, and may you may think that Odysseus or Ulysses is a Latin uh, name of him. Uh, as a as a true hero. Uh, felt good in this uh, chaos he was uh, he was through. Uh, I can assure you, as a psychologist, he also felt anxious, uh, and we can read it in between line uh, in the ways he dealt with uh, with with all those events happened to him. Uh, but I guess, of course, it's my guess, but uh, I guess he didn't allow himself to be caught in this. Uh, sense of helplessness. He always wanted to find his way through uh, to somehow 
changed the environment he was in, um, and he never become passive, uh, the, uh, as it is the, the most uh, common effect of uh, anxiety. And um, if you think about it, the standard activist environment uh, is perfectly designed to enhance anxiety. Uh, so if you are a rather uh, anxiety person, working as, as an activist is going to double the, the, the tr trouble you are in. Uh, as an activist, we are very much identified with ideas or movements for which we devote most of our resources. And, uh, and our actions, we want them to be meaningful, to change something. Uh, the change is not always a part of the plan. Uh, but with all those pressures, expectations, inabilities, destroyed hopes, everyday troubles, even prosecutions, uh, we, are, we are anxious all the time. And it's completely normal. It's a natural, uh, healthy adaptation uh, to super demanding environment and we will not we will not remove our, our anxiety by uh, suppressing it or uh, or uh, um, denying it we need to work with it every day uh, and stay in touch with with those feelings and it's uh, as it is not fading fading away um, the, the 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 modern world itself is a trouble is troubled enough to give us a, a hit of anxiety every day. Uh, but the modern world, all those troubles, COVID crisis, everything, and being an activist uh, is not, is not, not, not easy task to, to live with. So your anxiety uh, can manifest in despair or you can feel exhausted or horrified because some change, change to make uh, action or d decision uh, was missed. Uh, your anxiety may display as a burnout, f physical fatigue, uh, psychosomatic symptoms, tendency to overdose uh, alcohol or, uh, or drugs or sex even. Um, inability to disconnect yourself from uh, online activities. Uh, or you may feel just like sitting down on your couch and uh, waiting for the next, next disaster to happen. Uh, you, may, you may lose hope and, uh, and a fate in those ideas which gave you a drive in your life and it's all perfectly normal. And it's not going to fade away in the next couple of months and maybe years. Uh, the, the, the only easy year we had was last year and we, we, we really need to stand, stay the ground, uh, uh, remain self-centered, very mindful uh, of your own resources and uh, or your, about your own anxiety. Uh, you cannot afford to be triggered by every situation which is around you, nor political, nor personal, uh, or distracted. Otherwise, you certainly lose your way back home. Uh, you won't, you won't uh, win the small personal war with your anxiety by, uh, by um, trying to cover it with the uh, sense of humor, uh, uh, other um, activist activities, <laughs> uh, working triple as much, uh, and other, other stuff you may tend to uh, do in a normal time. So uh, question second we have for you is uh, how often you feel anxious. I would really want to know. Uh, is it zero every day or is it 10 every day? Um, I know that we are not giving you a simple answer for this problem, but it's, it's ma mainly about reframing your, your, your attitude and your understanding of, the, of this issue. So uh, how often you feel anxious, please tell us. It will be there in a second. All righty. <laughs> it's here. Okay. Can so you write good. all the time? Is that an? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can. You can just <laughs> write ten. <laughs> Sorry. If, if you are, if um, Maya is asking uh, uh, if she can write down uh, all the time, I feel like just all all the time. You can write down ten then. Um, 
But uh, as I said, it's completely normal. It's not a trouble. It's, it's, it's your, your internal world is trying to regulate itself with the feeling of anxiety. You've, uh, you're probably overwhelmed by emotions, uh, task, uh, and, uh, and, and, and it's, it's super normal. You need to get used to it, not fight against it. Uh, uh, fighting against it means uh, 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 um, trying to suppress what you're really feeling in the certain moment, and it doesn't, doesn't work really. Okay. So let's continue. Uh, from Bunny framework, N is for nonlinear. Hmm. Uh, uh, the, 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 the basic logic is gone, I would say. In a nonlinear world, uh, uh, as you may notice, the cause and effect are uh, disconnected, simply. Results of actions uh, taken or not taken uh, can end up being widely out of balance. Small decisions uh, may have consequences as well good as as bad, uh, and those consequences might be massive. Uh, you may put forward an enormous amount of effort, pushing and pushing with uh, little to see for it. Um, if you consider uh, the black swan like COVID, uh, it just appears out of the blue, turns everything up down and uh, and that's it changing uh, our revenue. in kind of or sent uh, of an uncertain world uh, it is important for you uh, to lose your expectations uh, of easy answers uh, I, I put it that way don't expect progress or any development to happen smoothly or uh, from one stage to the next, uh, like it should, <laughs> or in a logic way. Uh, logic is gone. Mm, rather, things are uh, gonna make sudden changes or even develop in a different di directions in the same time, and those directions might be opposite. So this is the bi basic concept of non-linearity, uh, and uh, you, may, you may look at it in a way that the linear, is an exception and non-linear is the norm now and to survive in this kind of world uh, you need to embrace an existence of uh, risk and possible failure in everything you, you do actually uh, and when I when I when I'm thinking about it I'm thinking about the Ulysses ability to have fun along the way. He was very much aware of the risk, very much. He, he, he knew he was cursed from the very beginning, but for him uh, it was not to get rid uh, of the fun, of the pleasure. He was flirting with Calypso, uh, he tied himself to the mast, the, the picture you saw before, he tied himself to the mast uh, uh, to listen uh, to a song of those uh, vicious creatures because he acknowledged uh, all those risks and act, ac act accordingly uh, to prevent them, not because he was uh, so serious and stiff uh, that g g he gave up his fun and pleasure in life. So uh, uh, probably uh, non-linearity, it's not to be fought with the intellectual capabilities, but the attitude. Uh, that's why I, uh, yeah, those are Syrians. They, they look more like Harpia, uh, but whatever. Uh, the, 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 it's a great capture of him dealing with the serious danger with his ideas of, oh, he was witty. <laughs> uh, other sailors are, uh, has, uh, he, they heads covered with, um, with some rags, not to hear the, the, the deceptive voice of the Syrian song. Uh, and I have the, the third question for you, or may we have the third question for you. Can you embrace the possible failure of your endeavors? Is it possible to think that your efforts are gonna be wasted? How does it feel for you? You may write down your answers and then we will learn something from it. 
So yeah, we are slowly reaching to the end. Um, and y yes, sometimes shit is just impossible to understand. <laughs> so I stay f f uh, for incomprehensible. Uh, and it, I, I'm laughing, but it's a serious issues because our brains, as I told you before, always seek an explanation uh, for the situation and phenomena we, we observe around us. And, uh, and it's crucial for us to understand that we don't have such a luxury now. Uh, we observe events and decisions that, that, that seem to, uh, seems to be illogical or senseless. All those questions like, why did they do that? Or how did that happen? Um, I, I, I hear it a lot in Poland uh, last month. We, we have um, a super serious political, social political situation, uh, which was forced by a um, doubtful uh, decision of our government and, uh, and basically doesn't make uh, sense. It's, it's just a stupid move. It makes our situation in a country even more difficult. Uh, yes, it, it is just totally incomprehensible for everyone, but it's here and we need to deal with it. Uh, and it's actually, sorry, Mara, it's actually because yeah. people are writing that that might be one good thing that's coming out of this, that, uh, that it's actually easier to accept failure now than it was before. Yeah, that, that's right. I, I didn't think about it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, when everything looks so... Like a failure. Yeah, <laughs> like a failure. Uh, everything is so dim. Yeah, you, you don't expect to, to be a, a, a hero or a, a gain an easy victory. Yeah, true. This is uh, um, the end state of information overload. And uh, it creates such a confusion, it's such a mess that, that, that uh, it makes for us difficult to separate signal from noise. That's why in, uh, in our world now, uh, it's so hard to make priorities. It's so hard to go with the schedule. It's so hard to decide uh, which party <laughs> is better than the other. Uh, because of we are overloaded with the false information, with the information itself, but it, with, uh, with the false information too. And the only good news I have uh, about this is if something is incomprehensible now, it doesn't mean it's going to stay incomprehensible forever. And they are dynamics uh, which remain shrouded in a mystery, but we, we, we will uh, eventually figure out how it's going to be, how it should be. Uh, but for this, again, I guess we need to dust off uh, this abandoned quality of ours, uh, the intuition. We so much believe that in a, a high-tech world uh, is useless and uh, only the um, scientific description of things can lead us somewhere. Uh, and it's not. It's not really. Uh, he, and uh, when Ulysses was sailing, sailing without the map, all direction, exactly as we do now, he used his ma uh, intuition to, to make his way home. He, he used his intuition to solve his problems. He was short of technical knowledge, as we know now. He was short of uh, procedures or uh, 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 case studies or description how to deal with the cyclop or a uh, uh, super horny uh, witch. He was just dealing with the with the events as they came with his superpower of intuition. And uh, it's not impossible for you, uh, it's just the very difficult thing than the one uh, you're used to it. So the fourth question, I know you've been quite active uh, during this short break, but the fourth question we have for you is, um, are you at ease with your intuition? Please answer, you may write it down. And, uh, and it, it will help us to understand how you do feel with the whole concept. So Ulysses' story shows uh, that we, we really don't need to be as afraid as we are now. Uh, because millennia before us, all kinds of heroes and heroines faced exactly the same struggles in their world. 
uh, the world was also, or even more, filled with danger and not uh, as much different as our uh, world. And uh, I would like you to end up this story, uh, th this reframe of our attitude uh, with the simple uh, conclusion. Uh, the, the brittleness I told you about could be met um, with resi resilience and slack. Uh, anxiety we are all suffering can be eased by empathy your mindfulness and uh, creating communities. Uh, Nonlinearity uh, needs context and flexibility, as you just uh, observed with us. Um, incomprehensibility uh, ask for transparency and your intuition. Uh, and among all those uh, terrible events, all this terror, and your brave fight against it, please remember. Uh, to have fun from time to time and embrace your inner trickster, inner U Ulysses, who wants to have a nice life and reach home in uh, less than 10 years. Thank you so much. <laughs>